In today's video, we will be looking at the ASUS Prime B660M-A D4 motherboard. We will be taking an unboxing and I'll be giving you a board tour across all the boards so you can see all the features and everything that this board has to offer. So without further ado, let's jump into that unboxing right now. So don't mind the uh, that at the front there, that's just a bit of sticker residue from Amazon, but <laughs> it happens, doesn't it? Here we go, here's the motherboard as you can see. So we also get two SATA cables, which is pretty standard. So that's just the board there. This is the user manual, which is fairly thick, but it's probably multilingual. Beer coaster again, don't know why they keep doing this with CDs, but anyway. So we have M.2 screws here, and obviously the IO shield, and a little bit of like quick start guide as well. So I didn't say this before, but this is a micro ATX board, and it's obviously on the LGA 1700 platform, which is older lake, Intel 12th gen. So as we can see here, we'll go from uh, top left all the way down to the bottom and then obviously the IO at the last. Top left we have our 8 pin CPU supplementary power. So obviously to give a bit more juice to the uh, processor. On the VRMs we've got a good thick heatsink here, which is obviously nice to see. There's no uh, heatsink across the top, which is a little bit of a shame. I would have liked to have seen a little bit extra uh, cooling. Obviously, more cooling is always beneficial, especially as components are getting more and more hotter these days, but it is what it is. Obviously, our LGA 1700 socket, which is right there, which is under that sort of protector there. So that's obviously, like I said, that's Intel 12th gen. It possibly might be Intel 13th gen, but we haven't had that confirmed whether B660 will uh, support this. Obviously B660 is a little bit of a step up from the H610 motherboard, and I do actually have a separate H610 motherboard. But this is a little bit of a step up. You get a little bit more extra features, mainly an, an extra M.2 slot, and obviously things like ARGB headers and what have you. We have four DIMM slots, which is actually quite nice to see. Also, I should say that this motherboard was round about the sort of £105 sort of mark, which here in the UK is quite a reasonable price for a Intel 12th gen board. So I believe this can take up to 128 gigabytes of DDR4. Obviously, this is the DDR4 version, which is, it's it has D4 at the end of it. If you have the D5 version, then obviously, you'll have DDR5 version. Sort of top right, we have two addressable RGB headers, which is really nice to see. Obviously supporting that sort of new ARGB, which is fairly popular now. The old sort of uh, four pin, 12 volt versions, um, obviously that's a little bit older now and not so favorable. The three pin, five volt a ARGB headers are obviously what a lot of people want now, because obviously people want that RGB bling nowadays. It's kind of almost like a, a gamer thing that everyone has to have it. We have the 24 pin motherboard connector, which is obviously your main power connector. I'm oh, sorry, I actually missed in the sort of middle top here. We have a CPU optional and a CPU fan header. So there's two fan headers there, which are obviously the four pin PWM style for your CPU mainly. But if you are using like a water block, or like an AIO cooler, then obviously you'll have a second fan header for that as well, which is nice. Uh, we have another fan header here, and actually while we're here, we may as well count the fan headers. So we, uh, well, if you count the CPU fan headers, which we will, we've got one, two, three, four, it looks like. Yeah, okay, so just double check there, and unfortunately there is only two fan headers along with the two CPU fan headers, so, Obviously, if you do need an extra fan header, you could use the CPU optional one rather than have that as a CPU one. Obviously, your CPU, you are going to need that for your CPU, but a little bit disappointing, but it's a micro ATX board, so it's a little bit to be expected, unfortunately. And, and obviously, you can use splitters, so even if you've got five fans, you can certainly fit uh, that onto one header, I'd say. Maybe four fans if you want to be extra safe, but you could fit up to five fans on one header, usually. Just below the 24-pin um, connector is... Quite nice to see a USB-C front header connection. Most cases nowadays actually include a USB-C front panel header. So it's nice to see that. I think it's a good addition and kind of 
won't it won't date the motherboard basically so you'll have a little bit of sort of future proof in there if you do go to a USB-C sort of case or if you need that there for USB-C devices then obviously you've got that as well so it's kind of it's just nice to have obviously we have our USB 3 connector as well which is just sort of a bit more towards the middle of the board from from that connector it's a little bit of a funny place actually because it kind of it gets in a gets in the way a little bit of the uh, USB-C connector, but I would have liked to just seen it just right below the USB-C connector personally, but it is where it is. So just moving further down now, we have two SATA ports, which I think is SATA six compatible. So yeah, that that again pretty standard. We actually have we actually have four ports in total. There's actually two more down at the bottom as well. You know, obviously M.2 is kind of where we're going. Obviously, so I I actually think four SATA ports or SATA ports is actually perfectly fine. And I don't think many people, especially if you go micro ATX, are going to really bother with uh, six SATA ports. They're not going to need that. Uh, so then we have a TPM sort of module header just below that, which probably most people aren't going to use. Obviously your front panel reset power button and all that sort of stuff, which is just below that. Uh, obviously our SATA ports, like I said, we have a an extra ARGB header, which is actually really nice because there's three ARGB headers. So if you do have a lot of a ARGB fans or what have you, then you're going to have plenty of... Uh, support for that for that in this model board we also have a four pin 12 volt rgb header which is sort of the old style so that's also there as well and we also have another usb free header as well so if you want to use this one i'd probably say use this one instead of the one which is further up by the usb c personally two usb 2 front panel headers which is obviously nice as well um there are some older cases that obviously have usb 2 still I would like to see it totally phased out USB 2 in terms of even on like the the IO of boards nowadays and obviously front panels front front panel cases as well but you know it's still not quite phased out and obviously there are some like uh pumps and what have you and sort of other devices that kind of still need a USB 2 header so it is there for you uh, we have an LPT sort of module thing, but I don't know what that is. Um, I don't think anyone's going to use that. There's also a COM header as well, but again, you're not going to use that. SP diff out. So I think if you're connecting advanced audio sort of things, again, I'm not really sure what that's for, but it's there. Um, and then we have our front panel audio connector, which is at the very far sort of left of the board. Uh, so moving up into the sort of like um, PCI Express sort of area. Uh, obviously our M.2 supporting PCI Express Gen 4, which is obviously very nice. Um, Intel 12th Gen obviously support Gen 4, which is great. So if you've got a Gen 4 drive, a Gen 4 NVMe drive, so that's going to be perfect there. And also it does have a heatsink on there as well. So obviously that's going to aid with cooling, which is nice. Uh, we have a PCI Express Time 16 slot. And again, this is uh, Gen 4 as well. And then we have two PCIe times one slots, which are Gen 3 just at the bottom. Oh, sorry, they're times 16. The PCIe times 16 Gen 3 slots, sorry, at the bottom. Obviously, that's going to be more for like expansion cards or what have you. Because this doesn't have Wi Fi on it, that's probably going to be like a Wi Fi card, I'd say. Um, and then at the very bottom, we have an extra M.2 slot as well. So again, that's going to be nice just to fit your sort of Gen 3 drives on. I don't think that's going to be... That's not a Gen 4 M.2 slot. I think that's only Gen 3, but I'll put it at the bottom just to confirm. And obviously now we go on to our uh, front panel I.O. This is kind of a little bit disappointing on this board, I'd say, the front panel I.O. I mean, it's okay and it'll get you by, but... I would like to see a little bit better, but it's not too bad. Uh, so we have a display port and a HDMI port. In fact, we actually have two HDMI ports there at the front. So obviously, if you are connecting three monitors and you potentially want to use the onboard graphics, that's obviously an option if you do want to use three monitors. So it's there, but I don't think many people are going to be using the onboard graphics. So again, this maybe could have been changed, but... It is what it is. A very old PS2 port, which again, I still don't know why they haven't phased this out, but there might be some people who have like some kind of overclocking things and they want a USB, um, they want a PS2 port or something. But again, I just don't know why this isn't phased out. Um, and again, USB 2 ports, there's two USB 2 ports there, which again, kind of feel we should be able to, we should be in USB 3 with all ports by now, but 
it is what it is so it's okay again i'll put it at the bottom but i think these are usb 3 gen 2 ports um, i'll put it again at the bottom exactly what it what they are but that's okay and then obviously a little bit disappointing again is another two usb 2 ports which four usb 2 ports on a, on this board is a bit disappointing to be honest so i've on such a new platform as the B660, it's, it's not right really. But and then we go on to the LAN port, which I think is a 2.5 gigabyte one, but they don't have like a special color for this one. But again, I'll confirm it be below. But I think it was, I think all B660 mobile boards are 2.5. But anyway, and then obviously a very sparse audio at the back. But again, most people are probably using USB headsets anyway, so I don't really see that too much of a problem on the audio side. So I really hope you like that video guys. This does look a good mobile board to me and obviously at the moment it is quite a decent price as well. So if you are thinking about it then yeah I'd probably go ahead. It certainly looks nice as well. I think that's one of the things I really like. I really like the sort of silver and black and kind of works quite well I find and Zeus generally do make very very nice boards so this is kind of like that sort of like more budget area obviously because it's the Prime series not the kind of you know the ROG Strix and all that sort of stuff which is the kind of high-end gamer sort of side or even creator sort of side but this is a good basic board that's going to do the job for anything up to I'd say the 12 600k I wouldn't go any further than that if you want to go up to 12 600 K then perfectly fine but I think ideally I'd say this board is a 12400 sort of board that's probably the uh, the ideal CPU I'd use of it but anyway I've, I've waffled on for far too long so hope you like that video guys smash the like button if you want to and obviously subscribe if you want to see more of these videos and I'll see you guys in the next one